Kimraha Huladunya, Fatugu, Yield Scots, the Celtic Podcast. On today's show, we're going to introduce you to some some more Gaelic proverbs, and we're going to help you break them down. And we'll do that in Fekovich back in Gaelic. We'll talk about Summerled and the salmon in our Celtic history segment, and you'll hear how a farmer found a lost city in everyday Celtic ways. Today, throughout the program, you're going to hear music from the Selkie Girls, the Mary Plowboys, Allison Helzer, Dougie McLean, and Julie Murphy. And as always, it's a wee bit of Irish trivia to test your knowledge to start us off. Name the county town in Mayo that was featured in John Ford's The Quiet Man, starring John Wayne, Maureen O'Hara, and Barry Fitzgerald. Kershmaha, let's kick this thing off. Enjoy. <laughs> The town it climbs the mountain and looks out upon the sea. At sleeping time, our waking tis there I long to be to walk again that kindly street, the place where. Hunting for the run with cudgels style we roamed about to hunt the drolling. We searched for birds in every first from Litter to Dunin. We sang for joy beneath the sky life held no print or plan and the boys upon a shore went hunting for the rain and when the hills were bleeding and the rifles were To the rebel homes of Cary, the Saxon strangers came, and the men who dared the oxies and to beat the black and tan, and the boys upon a shore. to them tonight the lads who laughed with me by the groves of Carham River on the slopes of Benati John Dolly and Bad Andy and the sheep Hunted for the rent. 
When the wheel of life runs down and peace comes over me, oh, lay me down in that old town between the hills and sea. I'll take my sleep in those green fields. The place my life began, where the boys of Banashroid went hunting for the wren. All right, that was Boys of Banashroid by. The Silky Girls. And now, hi, I'm Tom and Fekimich Beck and Gallic. It's time for Let's Try a Little Gallic. Now, I do not represent myself as an authority on the Gallic language, only someone who loves learning it and wants to help others. What I teach comes right from the textbooks of well respected Gallic teachers, so I hope you find it interesting, informative, and fun. And today, we're going to discuss some Gallic proverbs. And as always, I will display on the screen what I am discussing. So, Tashik Shin, let's begin. Now, proverbs are meant, uh, in the Scottish language, are meant to show the beauty of the Gallic language. And uh, so we're going to break each proverb down and explain its meaning. And, uh, you know, we've done this for the last three weeks, uh, last couple weeks, and we've done about three a week, and today we're going to three, do three more. And they're... It's so you can get an understanding of these wonderful phrases and kind of work them into your Gallic conversations or your writing. So, I hope you're enjoying this. All right, number one, or actually it's number seven. Yeah. Leonard Byrne for Le Clocken Becken. And the translation is, Great gaps may be filled with small stones. Fantastic advice to those frustrated by the lack of progress. It's basically meant to say, just keep plugging away and you'll get there. All right. I've got a little thing here, a little note on my computer. And uh, it's basically the same thing. It says, you will obtain your goal if you maintain your course. All right. Now, so we're going to break down these uh, words here. Liner is filled. Barren. Gaps. More. Of course, everybody knows more. Great or big. Then lay, which is with, clocken, stones, and beckon, little. And when you put all that together, it's Leonard Baron Vor, Le clocken, beckon. All right, let's move on to the next one. It's Hed Scholtach Harspinakig. Translation Cunning overcomes strength. This one is somewhat similar to the pen, being mightier than a sword. All right, hitch. It's uh, one of those regular verb things. It says for go. Um, Shaltak is cunning or crafty. Har is over there or across. And spinach is strength or vigor. And then, of course, when you put all that together, it is hitch shaltak har spinach. All right. The next one, and the last one for today, is Hek Krik Er Nasol Ach Meri Kills Goal. Translation, an end will come to the world, but music and love shall endure. Now, you've probably heard that one before. I know I have. Um, basically, it means no matter what calamity befalls you, you will always have love and music to bring you calm and solace. All right. Hick means come. That's one of those regular verbs, too. Crick is the end or a completion to something. Air is on. And soul is the world. Um, ach is but or however. Merdy is last or to continue. And of course, kill is music. And goal is love. And then they wrap that all together, and it's Hekri Er Nasol Ach Meri Kyol's Goal. All right. That's it 
for Fekermit Beck and Gaelic today. And um, I've said before at the end of this that if anybody interested in a weekly Gaelic class, just let me know. Um, once we get done with this whole coronavirus being quarantined thing, we will try to put something together. So just give me the uh, a com uh, email at Lord of the Ales at AOL dot com or give me a comment through the video and and uh, we'll let everybody know when we're going to do that. All right. That was Foggy Dew by the Merry Plowboys. Next, we're going to delve into the rich history that is our Celtic past in the Celtic History Break. Today's topic is the story of Summerled Salmon. And one of the legends surrounding Summerled is that in his early days, the forefather of the McDonald's lived in a cave in Morvern with his father. The two of, him, two of them had been in Ireland trying to make a name for themselves as warriors. And while they had made a name... Um, as great warriors, this last time saw them on the losing side of the war, though. So being hired warriors, or what they call gallo glasses, um, they weren't killed. They were stripped of all their possessions and banished from Ireland. 
With nothing to their names, they had taken up residence in a cave near Morvern until their prospects hopefully would eventually improve. Now, an Aelin Mechavik had come from Lockerber with ships and men to pillage Morvern, looking to expand his territories and gain people to rule. The local people, not knowing how to defend themselves from such a formidable force, quickly came up with the idea and asked Summerled to lead them to drive out these invaders. At that very moment that the local leaders had come to talk to Summerled, he was attempting to catch a salmon in one of the pools of water that trapped fish within his cave as the tide went out. The local people were insistent, but his hunger pains were equally insistent. Salmon were hard enough to catch, and his chances to catch this fish was not great. But in order to shut one mouth, the locals, and fill another with his fish, for his father and him, he stated that if he managed to pull off the feat of catching the fish, he would help them with the task at hand. With everyone looking on, he lowered his hands into the water and began to tickle his, wiggle his little pinky like a wiggling worm. The salmon saw the sight of a fat worm for a meal and swam right into the waiting hands of his captor. Fate had intervened and Summerlid had his meal. As the salmon slow cooked upon a spit above a fire within the cave, the locals regaled him with their story of impending woe and their inabilities to defend themselves. Summerlid agreed to help the local people defend the area. He would be their leader, and if victorious, he would be their king. By completing this act, the legend states that it showed that Summerlin was chosen by God to lead them. All right. And that's why today, on the McDonald Lord of the Isles crest, you'll see a salmon in one corner. Of course, you see the uh, bloody hand in one corner and, and uh, uh, a ship that shows the the ships that Summerlin uh, helped invent, and another one is up in the other corner is, uh, of course, their allegiance to Scotland. All right, that's it for the history break.
All right, that was Bragel Mokri. And now it's time. Oh, that's. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was Gail Mokri um, by Allison Helzer. Now it's time for Everyday Celtic Ways. Today we're going to talk about a farmer that found a lost city. Now, long before Stonehenge or even the Egyptian pyramids were built, Scarabray was a thriving village. Step back 5,000 years and time to explore the best preserved Neolithic settlement in Western Europe. Now one day a farmer on the island of Orkney in Scotland found a large stone that didn't look like it belonged in this environment. When the farmer flipped over the stone, he got the surprise of a lifetime. Underneath the stone was Scarabray, which is a hidden and lost city that existed as much as 5,000 years ago. The farmer thought it was a house at first, but because it looked rather small to be a city. But after showing people what he had found, the farmer soon realized that it was the lost city after all. Orkney is an island with a very, very long history. It actually has one of the oldest British settlements to have ever existed. Historians believe Scarabray was an active city more than 5,000 years ago. If this is true, then that definitely makes Scarabray older than Stonehenge and the Egyptian pyramids. Since most of Scarabray got covered with sand dunes over the years, it was preserved nicely for thousands of years when it was an active city. It is believed that it had been about 50 to 100 people living there. That might not seem much, but but it is a lot. It is sure a lot for a city back in those days when the population of people was, was much less. Now, the homes were not just sheltered for the citizens of Scarabray. The center of each home contained a waterproof basin that could have been possibly used to hold caught fish for eating. There were shelves and alcoves for storing all sorts of things. There was cl uh, clay pots, and rudimentary eating utensils, and plenty of fish and small animal bones. The complex and solid construction of Scarabray shows that early man had a mind for building. It was it has survived thousands of years. It also shows that early man could have lived anywhere. Orkney is a remote island, and life there must have been really tough. Early man did it, though, and Scarabray proves it. All right. If you uh, want to check out uh, the complete story on this, I'll post the uh, site you can go check us out at. I'll throw up a few pictures, too, so you can see what I'm talking about. If you've never heard of Scarabray, that's it for our Everyday Celtic Ways. The snow is starting, nor the carry Lightnings gleam athwart the left And winds drive on, we winter's fury Oh, are you sleeping, Maggie? Oh, are you sleeping, Maggie? Let me in, for loud the lynn Is rowing o'er the wall of craggy Fearful socks the birchy bank The rifted wood roars wild and dreary Loud the iron, yet the clank and cry a who lets Max Meary. Oh, are you sleeping, Maggie? Oh, are you sleeping, Maggie? Let me in, for loud the lynn is rowing o'er the wall of craggy. I've been my breath, I darn not speak, for fear arouse your walk right, Daddy. Calls the blast upon my cheek, oh, rise, oh, rise, my bonny lady. Oh, are you sleeping, Maggie? Oh, are you sleeping, Maggie? Let me in, for loud the lind is rowing over the wall of craggy. She's let him in, he's cast aside his dreaming plighty Lawyer washed your rain and wind, 
since Maggie knew I'm in a side yet. Knew since you're walking, Maggie. Knew since you're walking, Maggie. What care I for who let's cry for Bootry Bank or Walla Craggy? Are You Sleeping Maggie by Dougie McLean. Well, that's it for today's show. I hope you liked it. I'm trying to keep it interesting, informative, and fun while showing you the beauty of all things Celtic. I would like to thank everyone for all the support and kind words, all the likes and new subscribers. Top of level heritage. Thank you, friends. Now, before I go, the uh, trivia question and answer. Name the town in My Mayo, Ireland, that was featured in John Ford's The Quiet Man. Starring John Wayne, Maureen O'Hara, and Barry Fitzgerald. If you never saw that movie, it's really good. Check it out. That town is named Kung, C-O-N-G. All right. Remember to check out my YouTube channel, Ye Old Scott. We also got Learn the Gallic Song videos and our Celtic podcast, a whole archive of them. So check that out. We also have plenty of other things on there of interest. Songs and some uh, Gallic movies and other movies and things like that. So just give it a check out. All right. Martian Lee Vendrasta. Bye for now. I'm going to let you go with a song. Lambs in the Fold by Julie Murphy. Mm -hmm.